Elena Zanoni, I work at Oracle, I'm in the Linux group. Um, so what I'll be talking about today is a little bit of an overview of the tracing tools that are available in Linux. Uh, some emphasis on the newer stuff that has happened in the last few versions of the kernel and what's coming up. Uh, and so let's get started. So uh, at the beginning I want to talk a little bit about the infrastructure and the building blocks that are um, available on Linux today to perform, uh, you know, tracing, and, and they are used by all these tools. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Um, so basically, we have, sorry, three. Um, uh, all right. Uh, yeah, I can. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, so basically we have three different types of uh, uh, building blocks or infrastructure in the kernel, k-probes, trace points, and u-probes. So let's go through those in that order. So k-probes allows you to do dynamic kernel tracing. What do I mean by that? I mean, it, the terminology here is not really always the same. So when I talk about dynamic tracing, I mean tracing that is uh, taking place on an executable where you don't have to recompile, you don't have fixed trace points, and you can actually decide on the fly, kind of like a debugger, where you're gonna put your trace points and what to collect at the particular uh, trace points. So basically, you can do this on a running kernel. Um, you have to configure k-probes in when you build a kernel, but beside that, you can actually put your trace points your, your, you know, anywhere you want. Uh, so, as I said, similar to debugger breakpoints, uh, you insert um, a breakpoint instruction at, at a specific location and then, uh, you know, when the exception is caused, the handler actually will execute the actions of your probe, which usually are collecting uh, variables and calculations and stuff like that. Um, there are some optimizations that have been done uh, along, you know, during the years that k-probes have been in the kernel uh, to allow jumps instead of exceptions. So basically the, the path has been made as efficient as possible so far. These are used, as I said, by SystemTap, by Ftrace and Perf and the other tools uh, mostly support those two. Uh, alternatively to the dynamic uh, tracing, we have what I call static tracing, which is basically uh, if you want to probe at certain points in your code, uh, you have to instrument your code ahead of time. So basically, the, uh, there is static points in the kernel uh, code uh, where there are particular constructs, and those constructs have been, are used by all the tools. So they're kind of agnostic of what tool uh, is using these constructs. Uh, they are constantly being added, there are about a thousand, I believe, right now in the kernel itself. Um, all the details are in the file tracepoint.h, if you want to take a look at that. Um, more details, they basically use macros, uh, trace event, define event, and declare ev uh, event class. Uh, they have similar purpose but slightly different whether or not you have one single event or multiple points to probe where the events are kind of similar with the same parameters. So you can actually declare an event class and have some sort of an instantiation of the class um, at the various points. Um, so you define these events and then in your code uh, you actually use this function that starts with trace underscore and then the name of your event. So you can correlate, uh, so for instance in SCAD.C in, uh, SCAD and SCAD.H, um, you can correlate the definition of the macro and the use of it. Uh, and all the stuff that has been defined will be in include trace event subdirectory. So there are many .h files there that have all the events uh, that are currently in existence in the kernel. Uh, alternatively, if you look at, for instance, random.c, uh, you can see that there are definition of a class of events. So that can give you two examples of how to define uh, trace points in two different ways. Um, so the other construct that we use is uprobes, and this one allows uh, tracing of user space applications. Uh, this was like one of the latest things that have been added, and by latest 2007, but this was started like in 2005 basically with k-probes. So things have been building on top of each other. 
Um, and this allows you to use, uh, uh, as I said, to probe uh, user space apps uh, handling uh, 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 breakpoints inside the kernel. So the, the mechanism is similar to the k-probes, insert a breakpoint instruction, catch the exception, do whatever you need to do. Um, <clears throat> and you are allowed to have the different tracers on the same point. It's not that you just have to have one instance. So let's look a little bit at the details of how these are actually uh, implemented. So first of all, you have to configure those in just like with k-probes. Uh, their implementation is based on inodes because after all, all you're saying is you're trying to identify a location into a file. And so that is a perfect way of doing it uh, using a data structure that's already in existence. Um, uh, so you can register a U probe, that means you can add a probe uh, and then you can add observer or, you know, users of these probes and, you know, you can have multiple consumers, okay, for each of the probes. Um, you can do all sorts of tricks, you can uh, execute them uh, all the time that the, that the instruction is reached or you can only do them if certain conditions are satisfied, etc. So this is just a basic building block then all the syntax and the way that these are used varies from tool to tool and you can do very complicated things as you probably know by now. Uh, the latest in the family was you return probes that is basically uh, a way of placing probes at the exit of functions in user space code, uh, at the exit of functions in user space probe. Um, and it is done in two steps. You place a probe at the entry of the function. When you reach the entry of the function, only then you actually go in and insert the probe at the return, um, <clears throat> which is, would be actually the, the return location in the caller. Uh, so where are we status-wise with this implementation? So uh, there's, as I said, they're supported with perf, ftrace, and system tap. Uh, and others right now. Uh, U-Return Probes was the latest addition in 3.10. Uh, System Tap has been supporting those. Uh, the architectures for which they are uh, there is x86, x64, and PowerPC. There is current work going on for ARM, if anybody's interested, there's a link to the tree. Uh, they recently posted a new version of the patch and it's going under review and revision and stuff. Uh, the U-return probes are still also uh, a little bit, you know, behind, but they're, they're coming. Um, so let's look at the actual tools that you can use to, to do the probing, uh, and they provide an abstraction layer on these fundamentals concepts that I, that I showed you. Uh, so some background, so let's start with F-trace. This was like the first one to be into the kernel. So it started in 2008, is maintained mostly by Steve Rosted. Um, there are various trees where you can find various pieces of it. Um, the, basically, there are three different ways which the user can talk to Ftrace. Uh, you can use files into uh, the debug directory and echo commands into those files and those will be read and modify the behavior of Ftrace. Um, you can use trace command, uh, which is a command line tool, or, and event, at the end of, a, of your collection of data, you can visualize the data using a GUI that's called kernel shark, which is quite uh, interesting as well. Um, and it allows you to zoom into different you know, time intervals and different granularity and also highlight different type of events with um, different colors and stuff. So it's quite interesting. There is quite a bit of documentation right now in the kernel tree uh, regarding F-trace in general. The main two files are I listed there, uh, but there are others uh, for all the commands and stuff that's available. There are many articles on LWN and so, and so on. These are a little old, but it gives a good introduction. So <clears throat> again, uh, there are lots of config options. Okay, config options uh, when you build and uh, configure your kernel to have F-trace, and s most of them also um, define uh, what tracers, what plugins are available. Uh, some of those are default, uh, enabled by default in the Fedora kernels at the moment. Um, so you can get, um, do a test run or try it out uh, but without having to uh, rebuild anything. 
Um, so basically, as I said, how do you control F-trace? Uh, if you look at this debug tracing directory, uh, it has uh, output, it has files that um, allow you to specify the behavior of, of, of F-trace. So for instance, I just list a few here. There are many more and we'll see later. I specify a few more later. Uh, so current tracer, which tracer is in effect, like what are you tracing functions or other things. Um, tracing on, uh, you can turn on and off the tracing by enabling the writing to uh, a buffer or not. Uh, there is a file called trace, which is your output buffer, so where all the data gets stored uh, from your tracing. Uh, you can do live tracing if you use the trace pipe file. Uh, there are lists, uh, files that list available events, available tracers. Um, and there are files that are used to define dynamic tracing points uh, on top of the static tracing points that I was talking about before. Uh, then there are some directories there, some of which I'll talk about it uh, in a little bit. So what can you trace uh, with ftrace? A uh, function that will trace the entry of all the kernel functions. Uh, function graph, you can trace entry and exit. Uh, to the functions, therefore you can actually construct a call graph. Uh, you can look up latency, interrupts, uh, uh, preemption, and you can also decide to trace nothing in case you want to interrupt the collection of your data. Um, so which tracer is in effect is controlled by this current tracer file, which I talked about in, uh, before. So you can uh, have fun and enable all sorts of different things there. Um, so as I said, you can do dynamic tracing uh, with F-trace. The, by this, uh, I mean uh, you are allowed to define probe points on the fly uh, on, in your program without having to use precompiled locations uh, where to collect the data that you are interested in. Um, so you can do both k-probes and new probes. And as you, if you go and look in this magic tracing directory, you will see that there are files that are called k-probe events and you probe events that will store the information um, regarding which dynamic trace points you have enabled. And again, here the syntax gets very complicated, sometimes a little bit Byzantine in my opinion, but there are lots and lots of things you, have to, you can do. Um, so uh, there is some documentation, there is articles, and here are some examples of, 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 um, of syntax. So the first one, uh, sets a return probe. So at the end of do sys open, print me or collect me the return value. And so this uh, syntax is echoed into the kprobe events file. Uh, you can also do the same for uprobe. So you, if you want to put a probe in bash at that particular address, um, then you can store it uh, into the probe events file and then trace Ftrace will go and read those files and do whatever it's told to do, and, to and you can clear them by echoing nothing in into the files. So pretty straightforward. Um, the challenge, I would think, here for the user is to remember all the options and all the ver very little uh, finicky uh, syntax. So an aid to that um, uh, came out when Steve implemented this trace command user space tool, which is uh, another cover on top of the F-Trace engine uh, that allows to be a little more, more user, usable and user-friendly uh, to define all these uh, behaviors. So you can say trace command uh, record, report, start, stop, extract, list, um, and you, know, you have a little bit of transparency on all the complexity that, that you have under there. Uh, Steve just released or at least tagged uh, the 2.3.0 version last week, actually this week. Um, and uh, you can find it at that location. Again, you can read articles on that. There are, um, you know, help commands that you can use to look at some of the stuff. Um, so basically, this also allows you to do the same stuff that the manipulating the files directly into the tracing directory um, will allow you. There is, is, is equivalent. So what has happened in the 3.10, 11, 12, 13, you know, the latest kernels um, uh, in ftrace? So first of all, uh, this is just a list. I will go through those real quick. 
Um, so we have instances, function, function tracing triggers um, with many controls, uh, options, and parameters, uh, more trace clocks, and different options to um, disable the collection of uh, uh, entry and exit for specific functions. So if you want to avoid tracing some functions when you're trying to collect a graph, a uh, call graph, you can do that. Um, and then uh, you can actually uh, stop the tracing at the point of a warning. So if you're looking for some specific uh, and then things go bad and you're collecting maybe too, many, too much data and you want to stop it exactly at where the warning is triggered, you can actually do that. So as you can see, and I'll, I'll emphasize this, the trend before was to build all the infrastructure, collect, 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 collect all the data. Now the, the trend is, whoa, it's too much. Let's thin this down. So all the options that you're going to be seeing are kind of to narrow down and kind of filter all this output. Uh, that has been the emphasis in the last cycles of, of, of the kernel. Uh, again, updated documentation. And uh, the newest stuff, which is actually in, will be in 3.14, is the event triggers. Um, so what are instances? Basically, instances just allow you to uh, channel the data in different subdirectories. So uh, if you look at uh, the, mm, the tracing subdirectory, there is another directory called instances where under there, there is like almost a duplicate of the top directory. So you can uh, uh, have different instances of tracing going on and each of them will put uh, the results in, in its own buffer in a different subdirectory. So again, you can channel things. Um, and div divide them, um, and they're pretty easy to uh, enable by make directory and remove by remove directory command. They will automatically populate the subdirectory for you. So that has been uh, one of the biggest things that happened late, late, uh, recently. Uh, then again, as I said, filter on functions. Again, you don't want to trace all the functions that you have in the kernel. Um, so you can specify which functions uh, to use for tracing or to collect information about using the available, the, using these tracing filters. So you have a list of functions that you can select and that's in the available filter functions files, always in that magic tracing directory. And then you can actually enter stuff into a file that tells you, okay, these are really the ones that I want to look at. Or you can also enter information in a file that tells the ftrace to absolutely don't look at those. Uh, those I don't want to know anything about. Everything else is okay, but not that. Uh, so you can, again, echo what you are interested in into, this, um, into these two files. Uh, here I have an example of you know, stopping the trace when a certain function foo is reached. And so you can add this mark, this uh, syntax, this you know, this command, subcommand, uh, trace off, which will turn off your trace if that specific. So it's like a conditional tracing or or untracing. Uh, and then when you want to turn off one of these instances, and this is pretty consistent throughout all the filtering syntax, you negate it in front, right? And that will just disable it. Um, so as I showed you before, in, at the bottom of the slide, if you see, if, uh, you know, basically, if you reach foo, do something. So this thing is called, also known, is, is called function triggers, right? So basically, do something specific, start the tracing, stop the tracing, uh, enable something else, uh, collect something when a specific function is entered. So this is pretty simple concept uh, and the syntax is not too complicated, but it can have, uh, again, a lot of different um, options. So you can specify, enable something when a function is entered. You can say, do this for the first uh, n times that a function is, is entered. Um, or you can disable some event from happening when that function is entered. And uh, so here I've, I have some examples um, <clears throat> of, of uh, things that you can put in your filter. Um, and again, if you want to 
uh, operate on events itself, enable events or disable events, they have to be one of the ones that are defined in the available events. And those can be your static trace points, the F trace can see that we're in the kernel, or you can be the events that you have defined yourself uh, through K probes. Uh, okay, so again, you can do, as I say, things get complicated quite fast, or, and you know, it's not a bad thing, it's just re uh, remember all these options uh, is the challenge, but it's really, really flexible, and you can do a lot of stuff. Um, as I say here, uh, you can do a stack trace, so you can collect a stack when you enter foo, or you can do that for the first five times that you enter foo, or you can just disable the whole thing. Uh, you can also save a snapshot of the trace buffer, or you can dump the snapshot of the, you can dump the contents of the uh, trace buffer to the console. So there, it, there are many different, you know, little variants, and I think this kind of also evolved, you know, you know when Steve had to debug something and needed a feature, there it goes, which is good. Um, so the new stuff that's coming in 3.14, uh, for F-Trace, the big thing is uh, these event triggers that Tom Zanussi did. Um, they are right now in the for next, you know, inclusion for next. So just like, kind of like the function triggers, these are uh, do something special, enable another event, you know, when a certain event happens. So in a sense, you say, what's the difference between a probe? You know, do something, collect information when a specific location is reached. But this is at a level above. I would say this is kind of a meta level uh, because here you are like uh, an event occurs and this one enables another event. So here you're modifying the behavior of F-trace itself. So it's another level of indirection. Um, and so here again, you can have uh, a bunch of triggering events. And again, there is another magic file uh, called trigger, which contains the rules for these triggers to, 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 be, to happen. Um, so uh, for instance here, uh, you can do, if you're interested to enable something when the read is call is, 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 when the, you know, is, is happening, uh, you can, and you can, put your trigger, which will be your commands to do, uh, in this particular file under the event and then syscall, syscenter, read, trigger. Um, so for instance, the, the example below, I say collect a stack trace for the first two times that the, that the read system call is entered. Um, so again, this can become a bit more complex. It's not that the stack trace that you can put in there, you can say enable another event, disable an event, um, collect a, a snapshot, start the tracing, stop the tracing, uh, and as I said, counts and also condition, there is also an if uh, syntax uh, is allowed. So this is, uh, the summary, very generic, you know, it's not even scratching the surface here, but, you know, can get a flavor for, you know, if you're, if you're interested, there is a lot, a lot to read. So the other main tool is Perf, which uh, started a little later, um, and uh, it evolved on top of Perf counters. Um, and uh, it is now becoming bigger and bigger, encompassing a lot of things uh, and a lot of subsystems in the kernel. Um, so, as I said, these are you know many big contributors. Uh, there is a, um, the documentation is a little I was I wouldn't say sketchy, but you know they're not as uh, good as keeping the documentation up to date as they are, you know, improving the code, obvious. Uh, but there are, there is a wiki, uh, there is a user guide, which also is probably from 2012. So, you know, things have changed, but it's a good starting point, both of those. And if you want to look at the code and what's coming, it's actually uh, Arnaldo that maintains it uh, and collects everything, you know, so you, you can look at uh, history there. So just again, a little, you know, very 10,000 feet uh, view. 
uh, so of, of the various subcommands. So this is similar to trace command, which is actually the opposite because trace command was modeled after perf in a sense. Uh, but you have a main command perf and a lot of subcommands that allow you to do um, a lot of stuff. You can uh, statistics, um, you can print, you can record into a file. Uh, you can then report what you have recorded into the perf.data file. Uh, you can do differences uh, and see what has changed between maybe two consecutive runs of the same thing and you can find what the different outputs were and where things went uh, different. Um, you can do live uh, performance uh, checking. Uh, you can, of, of course, do the dynamic trace points, uh, as I said before. Um, you can do system call. Um, uh, collection of system call uh, entry and exit uh, parameters and return values um, and you can use scripts to manipulate your data that you have recorded. So it's pretty powerful and this is just a little bit of the commands. Um, again, you can list the events that are available, um, you can look at logs, scheduler behavior, you can do KVM uh, monitoring, so it's really, really powerful. Um, what can you observe, quote unquote? Um, so basically, if you do a perf list, you'll see a bunch of the stuff that you have available in terms of events. Uh, but basically, you can do the trace points, the, the bottom two parts, uh, the static trace point, like the, the ones that I showed you at the beginning, dynamic pref, pre trace points that you user have defined for the specific run. Uh, and then all the stuff that are, you know, in various counters and registers, um, you, you can use, um, you can look at that stuff too. And again, all is defined is this file called perfevent.h. So if you want to really look at all the stuff, it's all in there. Um, there, there are ways of narrow of narrowing what perf is looking at. So this is kind of a way of focusing on a specific type of a target or a subset of what's going on in your system. Uh, Thread specific system wide focus on a specific CPU or a specific process. Um, so there are, there are many, many, again, um, variables in play here. So I'm not gonna go through all of those. Um, as I said, you can do dynamic tracing with perf as well, uh, and uh, you can use the command perf probe, um, and you define the, as you see at the bottom, uh, you can define a probe for a specific uh, executable, which in this case is, you know, user space. Um, and you can add a probe, delete a probe, uh, and do a dry run without actually uh, running um, your, your program. So it's, uh, again, perfprobe.txt is the file that has somewhat uh, explanation of, of what this particular stuff does, which is, you know, same. Um, the interesting thing here is that you can actually use the debugging information to set a specific probe at a specific location and also to collect the val values of specific variables at that location. Um, and this is kind of important in terms of the history of this whole se section of, of the kernel and how uh, we got here. So some res recent improvement again, 3.10 and forward type things you can do. Uh, you can uh, use different methods to look at different data output files from different runs. Um, you can group the events and show them in a, you know, more user uh, intuitive way, uh, lots of bug fixes. Uh, you can now have, a, there is a subsystem that looks at memory access. Um, there is a, a talk that uh, Namyam Kim get, did in um, sometime in 2013, in the summer, yeah, June 2013. Um, and that has some of the latest uh, examples um, if you wanna look at that. Uh, so another thing that's in the works right now uh, is this integration between ftrace and perf. So this is again interesting in terms of the history of these tools um, because 
we have infrastructure that is used by both tools, which is kind of, you know, duplicated, but not really because different tools have different needs. Uh, so there's been talks for the past, well, I don't know, maybe a year or two ago, about integrating this infrastructure, like the buffers and stuff like that. Uh, that never went anywhere after a few, you know, interesting debates on the kernel mailing list. Um, so the infrastructure is likely to remain kind of separate, except for the parts like, you know, the trace points uh, and the K probes and the U probes stuff. But the rest is kind of all tool specific. Um, uh, but now we are looking at integrating the, the top level. So uh, at this point, we would, the, the, the proposal uh, was to have F trace become part of perf. Uh, so that you can say perf f trace and have the same behavior as of f trace by itself. Um, so there was an, a few patches, as you see, five versions of them were, were sent out. Um, but now at the moment, this is kind of stopped and uh, uh, Namyang is going to come back to this eventually. But um, there was a lot of commenting and uh, initial idea was to have, you know, perf trace record, perf f trace show, report, and live. Um, and those were the first ones that, that were implemented uh, with this set of patches. So look at uh, this, this will, will come back. You know, it's, it's not permanently stopped. I'm sure they will figure it out. Um, and again, some of these commands repeat the structure of the perf commands where you can actually specify um, what to, to trace a specific CPU, a process, uh, system-wide, and so on. And then, you know, then you take a, you, you, you will be taking advantage of all the infrastructure that's in Perf for showing stuff like a lot of the nice histograms um, and, and other things. So there is quite a lot happening there. Um, the another start, thing that started and stopped uh, but it was promising was support for STT markers, which are the markers that um, DTrace uses. Um, and uh, so they are actually statically defined markers, but with a different syntax. Uh, System Tap is supporting those through some, you know, conversion layer. Uh, there are a bunch of patches. This is also um, stopped. Sometimes that happens, right? People have, are pulled in other directions, but that was also quite promising. Uh, another one was from Jiri, which is one of the main people working on F trace, uh, um, on Perf, sorry, uh, to do some toggle events. Um, so it's kind of like the triggering idea. Uh, and again, this also is kind of on hold at the moment, but I'm sure it will come back. So this is kind of the very quick overview of Perf. Um, some stats, if you're curious, nothing, uh, you know, exciting here, but just the number of people. I started collecting this when there was kind of a, um, you know, perf, f trace, it was kind of divided community and stuff, and so I started track. So I keep every year, I keep adding, um, and it seems to have stabilized in terms of, you know, perf has a little more contributors, but f trace is not, uh, it's not dead by any means. So a quick look, I have five minutes, yeah, I should be okay. A quick look at other tools that are uh, floating around. They're not part of the kernel itself, but people use them. Uh, so we have KTAP, SystemTAP, LTTNG, and who D-Trace. Um, so KTAP is uh, new. Uh, it's, not in, it, it, it's not in the kernel at the moment. <laughs> um, um, it's uh, been brought forward by Jovi, which is at Huawei in China. Uh, it all started this year and is still working on features and things. Uh, people got quite excited about it, um, uh, so much that Greg put it into the staging tree and then there was like, whoa, wait, we haven't reviewed the code. And so the thing got pulled. And uh, so there is quite a, a lot of cleanup and things that they've been asked to do, but it hasn't happened yet. And in the meantime, they have done two more releases. So will this happen? Um, I hope it will, but uh, you know. So it's basically uh, the idea similar to the trace. This was actually done because of the embedded community. They needed something a little more lightweight. 
so it's interpreted, there is an interpreter um, uh, based on Lua, uh, the language, the Scripian language, sorry, to, to define the action. So the concept is always the same, right? Go somewhere, you know, put a probe, execute something. Uh, the way this is done uh, varies, right, from tool to tool. So in this case, is in, um, you write your script of what will happen at a specific location, and this is interpreted uh, inside the kernel. So um, there is no requirement, as opposed to system tap, which we'll see in, in a couple of minutes, there is no requirement for having GCC around, so people are, you know, uh, rather excited about it. And it's fairly lightweight, so it, it, it was well received. But right now it's kind of like, again, in limbo. A few weeks ago, there was a new proposal um, by this person, Alexei Starovoitov, who decided to reuse uh, the Ber Berkeley packet filtering stuff to write filters for, um, for tracing. So I don't claim to understand this very well, but uh, there, is, there is the link here. You can go and look at the discussion. Again, lots of discussion. Um, he has tended the, 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 the state machine for the BPF uh, to include more complicated things. He has tended the number of registers, the instruction, and so on. Um, he can also, instead of writing programs directly into the BPF format or instruction set, you can actually write them in C. There is a backend in LLVM that will translate those in BPF instructions. And there is a backend in GCC. The backend in GCC is not in GCC. I mean, it is maintained by him um, on GitHub somewhere. Uh, on GitHub somewhere. And the LLVM, I believe, is actually included in the LLVM compiler. Um, so then this, this discussion where everybody, again, was excited about seeing this new approach, or maybe we can use it, we can uh, integrate it with KTAP, and then it started derailing, you know, oh, well, we can include GCC in the kernel. So that's kind of where it stopped. So the discussion is quite interesting. Again, promising, but right now it's still, you know, it's fairly new, it's just like a month old. So um, then system tap, real quick, one slide for per tool. Um, again, this is all started in 2005. This was like the first thing on Linux when Solaris was doing D-Trace, right? And this is how we got the K-probes put in and all that stuff. There's always been some controversy around system tap because of the use of GCC, the execution of, you know, it creates a module, the modules get inserted into the kernel. Oh my God, is that safe? Maybe not. Uh, it needs a debugging info. We don't have the debugging info from the kernel. So there was a lot of controversy there. Well, right now we're actually seeing that Perf itself is actually supporting the use of the debugging information. So things have changed since 2005. The community has become uh, more receptive about having more tracing infrastructure into the kernel. At the beginning, they really didn't want any of that. Uh, LTTNG, also tools outside of the kernel, been around a while. This is continuing. People are using it. It's in some of the embedded distros. Uh, they keep making releases. The community is quite alive. So that's another alternative. I'm not going to go over that. Uh, D-Trace on Linux, that's my group doing that. I have to, you know, I have to mention it. Uh, it's out there. Um, we're almost running out of time. So anyway, uh, this is also totally compatible to the Solaris D-Trace. Um, we are making sure that the syntax of the disk scripts doesn't break and that, you know, as much as, you know, things are meaningful on Linux as they are on Solaris, some things are not. Um, so there's been a quite customer demand and, and also internal to Oracle, so we've started doing that. Um, it's available with the Unbreakable kernel, which is 3.8 based, uh, x86-64 only. Um, so if people want to take a look at it, it's there. Unfortunately, we have licensing things that they're not going to change as far as I know. So the, the kernel changes at GPL. There is a D-Trace module, which is CDDL. Um, so, but it's, it's progressing. And, uh, you know, we have seen used inside Oracle. We're integrating it with PHP, just like the Solaris version. And now with MySQL, just like the Solaris version. Uh, so we're slowly moving forward on that. Uh, and I have an example, so we can do user space probing. Uh, I'm not going to go through the example because we are basically running out of time. Uh, one last thing, and actually instead of you asking questions to me, 
um, I wanted to ask questions to you of um, um, basically, are you using tracing today? Do you find it easy to use? Are, you know, are we hitting the mark there or are we still like in our little sandbox? Um, yeah. That's, that's, so that's one intense of frustration at the moment. And nobody is, appears to be working on porting Perf to the ELA because. Yeah, it's, it's uh, the dwarf stuff. It's been done lived separately, yeah. Anyone else? I've only one comment, which is that it seems um, on Solaris D-Trace is reasonably accessible. Uh, it seems that on Linux, once you go to pass Yeah, D-Trace is, we're starting, there is a website, but it's accessible to customers of Oracle, so uh, right now we're trying to make it accessible to a few more people uh, in order to, uh, but it is just starting right now, so we're, we're slowly implementing the functionality, so it's not equivalent quite yet. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a manpower issue as well to kind of, you know, try to do more, um, exposure, to give it more exposure, but. So the question was. Oh, about D-Trace and uh, the availability of D-Trace, which is, well, you know, know on Linux. Easy to use it. Oh, oh, oh. So D-Trace is quite easy to use. Yes, examples, yes, but yeah. Tracing on Linux beyond S-Trace, lots of good examples, hard to use, very often not internal, but sort of. Oh, I see, okay. Yeah, it, 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 that's why we ported D-Trace to Linux because that's the feedback we got from our customers. Uh, I, I wish it would be a bit more openly available, but, um, but that was exactly one of the reasons. Yes? Sorry, again, uh, just another one. If we're talking about the Linux Kernel, which is the You should be able to, if you if you know the location of the variable, yeah, yeah. And if you have the debugging info, even better. <laughs> I think we've got time for two more questions from the audience. If there's any other questions, otherwise, um, please join me again in thanking.